when you interview a guy like Canelo, I mean, that is a, well, you just talked about interviews. That's got to be up there as well. Yeah. I, it's, uh, it's interesting. I've come to realize I only cover the most dysfunctional sports and, and in boxing and baseball. And, uh, I love it. Those are my two passions, but, uh, for boxing, it's ironic. I started because of Meredith Morakovic and I, oh. I box as a hobby and I've been doing that for about 10 years. And at some point I said to myself, man, I really want to find a way to combine the passion I have to be active in boxing with the work I do as a broadcaster. It is really tough to get started in boxing in terms of trying to know the right people at the lowest levels. It's pretty shady. You might not get paid. Um, so it's not really organized. You know, there are a bunch of promoters scattered all over the place. I didn't know how to get started and I kind of just put it on the back burner for a while. And then Meredith came up to me one day in 2019 and she didn't know any of this. She didn't know my interest in boxing. And she said, Hey, did you ever, you know, would you ever consider calling boxing play by play? And internally I'm like, how the hell do you read my mind like that? She has a friend <laughs> who is a lawyer for Debella entertainment, which is one of the larger boxing promotions in the sport. It's not, you know, in the, you know, the top, you know, the Mount Rushmore as, as it currently stands right now. But I mean, Lou DeBell is a hall of fame boxing uh, person, you know, whether it's a TV executive yeah. promoter. So I got in calling his boxing shows and I've really enjoyed that. I still do with that, that for about three years and recently matchroom boxing, which is one of the big boxing promoters out there in the sport. They now promote Canelo Alvarez um, hired me to, do some blow by blow and some hosting for them. So I'm just eating it up. And yeah, we had a Canelo press conference the other week in San Diego. And what's funny is people are asking me, like, were you nervous talking to Canelo Alvarez? Is, did it feel surreal? Were you starstruck? And my answer to them was no, uh, I, maybe I should be, but I, I wasn't I probably because of my prior work experience interviewing guys who were six, eight, and six, seven and CC Sabathia and Aaron judge. And those guys who are literally larger than life and also talking to the Derek cheaters and the Jorge Posadas in the past and the Yankee old timers. Those are my legends, right? Uh, Canelo is uh, an amazing fighter, an amazing person. Really. I hear nothing but great things about him. but I was cool. I was comfortable and it yeah, was just, uh, it was just business. It was enjoyable, uh, but I, it's not something that I just throw away at the wayside and take for granted by any means. I mean, I was just talking to the pound for pound King. And with that, you know, that you got to bring your a game mm -hmm. and uh, it was a really memorable experience, but yeah, you're right. There's a lot of like pomp and circumstance in the boxing world that doesn't exist in most sports. If you have a big fight, there are a lot of the fight week festivities that lead up to the main event. It's not just show and go on that, Saturday night on that fight night, there's the, you know, the official press conference there's, then there's the official way in that, you know, there's, it's all very ceremonial. I think it's really cool. I think it builds up the drama, the storylines It allows the fighters to meet kind of meet face to face. You have some fight week dramatics, possibly building up the narrative all the way into fight week. And it's, it's really cool. It reminds me of, uh, you know, the old school approach, so to speak. Yeah. Um, where you have, you know, old time sports, just kind of building it up. And I, I really appreciate that. So uh, it, it, you know, gives me a, a spot to kind of work in an area that I'm really passionate about. That's what makes boxing so unique because yeah. it has so many things leading up to it. I mean, you guys did this press conference. We're in March and this fight is May 7th. Yeah. Preparation is so big. And with Canelo, and his, you know, he has a little language barrier thing. He can speak some good English, but I'm sure you've had it with interviewing some of the Yankee players that are Spanish speaking. And when you have to deal with that, even with Canelo, who has better English than kind of most Spanish speaking athletes, were was there any nerves there when it comes to the language, kind of like a language barrier? Um, there, there weren't. I would say I, I had that in my mind. I was conscious of that because I wanted to make it as simple for him as possible, but also leave some substance into the questions where he could say something in English 
Um, I, I obviously think there are athletes who know how to speak English, but there are also, there's also speaking English in front of a microphone and they're two very different things. And I don't blame them. They don't want to be misquoted. It's very important. Very important. And I give Canelo Alvarez so much credit because over the last two to three years, he has made significant strides publicly in speaking English. If you go back three years ago, he was not doing any interviews in English. He wasn't talking in English. You would never hear him. It was just, it was straight Spanish. So I give him so much credit for, for working on that. A guy who in the baseball world who really sticks out to me with that is, is Glaber Torres. When I first yeah. heard him, he was trying. I feel like where Glaber Torres was when everyone first heard about him and when he came on the map, he was probably where Canelo is now. Maybe Canelo's a little advanced, but you saw that he was intent on learning the language. And then year as the years go by, he speaks fluent English now. I'm talking about Glaber Torres in, on the microphone. So yeah, it's very impressive. It's, it's, it's super impressive. It's, yeah, and, then, and we're, we're even seeing guys like Jason Dominguez, yeah, who's 19, yeah. really practicing his English. Yeah. And we have guys like Gary Sanchez, even Melky Cabrera, who don't even try. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's uh, it, it's it's envious that I, you know, I want to learn a second language for sure. It's something sure. that I think a lot of people say, "Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that." We never get to it. They they kind of have to. And I really think, in terms of Canelo, this will elevate him to an even bigger level in America right. once he starts being comfortable fluently speaking English on a microphone and it's going to happen in short order. Last thing on Canelo and then we'll get into the John boy and then the MLB lockout. Cause I know we're running out of time here. Quick. Yes oh, or no answer. Is Canelo going to win this fight? Yes or no. I think it is a really tough fight for him, but yes, I think he finds a way to win it. He's going up in weight. I mean, he, he started, I think at 147 pounds, 154 pounds when we first really saw him, at the elite level that he's at, he's cleaned out 160. He's cleaned out 168. I don't think he's naturally 175, but I think he does enough to beat a guy in Dimitri Bivol, who's one of the best light heavyweights out there. He's going to find a way. Is he like you would think considered greatest full time at some point when it's all said and done with Canelo? I know Floyd, you know, is the epitome of you know yeah, all time great. I, I don't, I don't, I don't put Floyd there in terms of the the greatest of all times i think he's probably the greatest of his era i i I think canelo has the chance to be the greatest mexican fighter of all time and that says a lot and a lot of people that are you know mexican hold that in real high regard but i you know there's you know there's the the Ray Robinsons, the Muhammad Ali's out there that I don't know if, you know, you have the same conversation with the names like Floyd Mayweather and Canelo Alvarez. I mean, he's an all-time great. Canelo sure. is an all-time great. Floyd is an all-time great. Look, I got a, a, a really interested in boxing because of the defensive style that Floyd Mayweather displayed. But I think there are differences between greatest of your era and greatest of all time.